Hello everyone, I'm Matt. And I'm Naomi, and we work at Bournemouth University. This video is about one of our research projects called Google Under the Earth, Seeing Beneath Stonehenge. Here we are at Stonehenge. It's one of the greatest archaeological sites in England, and we still don't know exactly why it was built or what it was used for. We'll discuss the various theories later, but for now let's talk about the Stonehenge Riverside Project. The project started in 2003. Scientists at Bournemouth University worked with scientists from Sheffield University for six years to find out more about Stonehenge and the surrounding area. So let's have a look around. Naomi, why don't you tell us about the first site we're going to visit? Sure, Matt. This is the Durrington Wall site. It's really significant because 10 Neolithic houses were discovered here. Archaeologists reckon it would have been the largest village in northwest Europe. Well, 10 doesn't sound like a big village to me. Well, no, but the houses were all really close together in a very small area, so scientists think that there were probably lots more houses on the site. Here's what they might have looked like. Other finds nearby, such as pig and cattle bones, scientists think that these indicate lots of feasting took place on site, and pottery and flint arrowheads also support the theory of a large settlement. And is there anything else significant on the site, Naomi? Yes, there is the Durrington Avenue and the Southern Circle. These are the main components of this ceremonial complex. The avenue was built before the main site. It's made of flint and gravel and is aligned on the midsummer solstice sunset. It's really big. It's 30 metres wide and stretches from the River Avon to the Southern Circle, a distance of over 170 metres. And the Circle Monument itself was really big. It was 40 metres in diameter, consisting of six concentric rings of timber posts. That's really impressive. I know. And archaeologists think that the builders of both the Southern Circle and Stonehenge actually lived in the village. So where are we going next, Matt? Well, we're going to follow the River Avon to the end of the Stonehenge Avenue. The river would have been a vital stretch of water for the people who lived here. You can see from this aerial view how it links the sites together. Where are we now? We're at Blue Stonehenge. It was only discovered in 2008. Excavations revealed a partial ring of up to 26 holes. The size and shape of the holes indicate they once held some of the blue stones which can now be found at Stonehenge. It was probably dismantled in 2400 BC. That's nearly 4,000 years ago, and the stones moved to their current location in Stonehenge. Talking of Stonehenge, should we check it out, Matt? Sounds like a plan, Naomi. We'll go along the Stonehenge Avenue. This processional route is three kilometres long and links the River Avon and Blue Stonehenge to the site of Stonehenge itself. And here we are. What can you tell me about Stonehenge then, Matt? Well, Stonehenge is a very complex site, but can be divided into two main parts. There is an outer bank and ditch, and a ring of 56 holes just inside the banks. These are called the Albury holes, and scientists still don't know what they were used for. What's the other main part? Well, sometime later, the inner circles of stones were erected and rearranged. There are two different types of stone in the inner circles, a horseshoe of Welsh blue stones in the centre, and the sarsen stones. These are huge megaliths, and the five trilithons are famous across the world. Hang on, hang on. What's a megalith? Well, it's a large stone that's been used to construct a structure or monument. Ah, oh, OK. And what's a trilithon? Well, that's a structure consisting of two vertical stones supporting a third stone which lies horizontally across them. It's been suggested that some of the largest stones could weigh up to 50 tonnes each. Wow, that is really heavy. So how was Stonehenge built? Well, no one knows for certain, but the Neolithic people were certainly very dedicated to the job. Do you know why Stonehenge was built, Naomi? Well, sadly, no, Matt. No one really knows, but there are lots of theories. These range from Stonehenge being a giant stone calendar. Scientists have suggested that it could have been a cemetery. Other scientists have suggested that it was a place of healing. Or perhaps it was a really important ceremonial site for the summer solstice. That's a lot of theories. Where can I find out more? There is loads of information on the web. Check out the Seeing Beneath Stonehenge website and download Google Earth to really explore the site. Or you can follow the project on Facebook and Twitter. Stonehenge and the surrounding area is one of the most intriguing archaeological sites in the world. New discoveries are being unearthed all the time. Perhaps one day you'll be involved in the next major discovery. Thanks for joining us on our tour. We hope you found it interesting and will follow the project through our social media sites. So it's goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. We hope to see you at Bournemouth University one day soon.